freaking cutie pies? This is a video on Night in the Woods and what I think it does so uniquely well and the things that I like about it that differentiate it from other games and also why it's just cute as heck. So freaking cute. But it's not like a super fancy schmancy art critique because I don't know any of the fancy fucking game design words for things because I'm not a fucking nerd and also I don't know how to read. All that said, obviously this video is gonna contain some pretty strong opinions. So if you're like super sensitive or whatever, consider maybe asking for a hug from somebody that cares about you and that you love. Sometimes playing a video game can feel like a conversation. The game developers are telling you what they think is fun, what interests them, and especially when the game is grounded in a real world setting, they're telling you what they think about it. Night in the Woods is a game so good in such specific ways that it actually makes me want to disown other games. This is gonna be a weird one, but just stick with me. Imagine an island that has three gamer girls on it, that has an economy centered entirely around gamer girl bathwater. And each of those gamer girls... Actually, wait. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. This analogy is critically important, but I'll come back to it later. This video is a review of Night in the Woods. No big spoilers, by the way. It's a game about this college dropout, May, and her personal struggles as she returns to her hometown, Possum Springs, to spend time with her old homies and to see how things have changed. This story is also about the struggles of the people in that hometown, the people close to May, and the people not so close to her. And I personally found the little looks into the lives of the townspeople to be the most effective and unique part of this game's story. And I'll get into exactly why later. Oh, and also there's a little bit of supernatural mystery sprinkled in, but since I don't want to spoil the game for you, because I really want you to play it, we won't get into that too much. Now at first you might think, wow, this game is really bright and happy, because you know, look at that voice. And although it certainly has a lot of humor injected into it, do not be fooled by the game's adorable art style. It's actually pretty dark. Unlike many modern games, Night in the Woods doesn't need brutal deaths or bodies flying through the air to get you on the edge of your gamer chair. It does it through grounded storytelling that comes across as genuine and emotionally vulnerable as your buddy across from you on the couch telling you their deepest, darkest secret before they reveal they didn't like Skyrim and you chase them out of the room with a broomstick. Storytelling! This game does it real good. If this game's story was a type of kush, it would start with a D for darn good. But it's not for all of the exact same reasons of why games like The Last of Us, for instance, succeeded at storytelling, which, for the record, I think is a near masterpiece as narrative games go. But The Last of Us relies on many more visual and violent dramatic moments to execute a stellar story which is a pretty typical format for games today. Nevertheless, a good chunk of the reasons why both of them are good intersect, like well-structured dialogue, effective representation of emotional trauma and human connection, but ultimately Night in the Woods has a distinctive enough execution that it's worth analyzing what it did specifically so uniquely well. And this video won't focus entirely on the narrative elements in Night in the Woods, despite it being, I mean, two steps away from a visual novel. We're just gonna focus on the story for a good part of it, because it's what makes the game stand out so much, and most of the reason why it's so good. In a sea of overly sanitized, overly clumsy, or overly cliche video game stories, Night in the Woods represents a significant change of pace. The gameplay has a supporting role to the story, as opposed to the story having a supporting role to the gameplay. So by praising it for this, I'm not saying a game always needs to prioritize its story. Most games should probably have stories as a supporting role, since interactivity in a video game is the main draw. I mean, do you think I played Skyrim so much for its grounded storytelling? <laughs> I'm just saying that if you do choose to focus on the story in your game rather than making it entirely a vessel for gameplay mechanics to shine, maybe make the 
a story in your story-driven game. Good and interesting. Otherwise, your game probably won't be good or interesting. Night in the Woods isn't a revenge story, or a learn to love a small human story, or save the world story. It's more of a coping with the mundane but challenging parts of modern day life story, which is arguably more relevant to most of us who don't have adoptive daughters. What is with video games wanting us to have kids? I'm gonna be honest, parenthood just seems like a scam. You can't make me love her! There's nothing wrong with a thrilling story, and it's okay if a game has a pretty standard perspective on things, as long as it executes its story beats well and with some self-awareness. My main point here isn't exactly to criticize other games, because many of the ones I've shown are ones I really like. Rather, my point is I want to see more games like Night in the Woods. It is clearly a really personal story told from a very distinct perspective, and I hope we get more like it because there's almost always something of value to take away from stories as earnest as Night in the Woods. Before we dive deeper into the themes of the story, let's talk a little bit about the other parts of this game. And don't you worry, we'll be getting to those gamer girls soon enough. As I said, Night in the Woods is a story-centered game first and foremost, but it also includes mini games and a variety of other interactive elements. In my opinion, the minigames do a great job of breaking up all of the different moments of dialogue. Sometimes these minigames don't even have any real difficulty to them. They're mainly used for humor, which is actually really effective most of the time. Actually, the funny thing about the minigames is that you often don't need to do well in them to progress. More often, the characters will just react to your success or failure with some funny quips, instead of it actually affecting the story. And I'd say in general, Night in the Woods has a pretty distinct and snappy sense of humor, which is not only appreciated to break up the serious moments, but also leads to some very memorable moments in its own right. Ahem. Better cue my worst student. Cue my worst student. The subject of my stories. I tell my friends back home, and they ask about life. Out here in the sticks, it's you. I worry. At the end of my life, you will be the only one I remember. I did. You key. My car. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I was playing this game, I just... I just felt like sometimes I was reading the most hilarious group text ever. One of the best parts about Night in the Woods is hopping around town looking for little secrets. This game obviously has a main story that focuses on interacting with May's homies and it's impossible to miss. However, there are a ton of separate mini stories told all around Possum Springs. These little storylines don't fall into your lap. You have to look for them, which often involves hopping across telephone wires and buildings to find them. The town is stuffed with quests that range from heartwarming to heartbreaking to just goofy as hell. The sheer diversity of quirky but believable characters in the town rival that of re-releases of Skyrim. <laughs> oh, it's counting, baby. Many of the stories told in this game are pretty relatable. Sad, goofy, awkward, or otherwise. Sometimes so relatable that it's hard to not be the live streamer that cries while playing a video game. This story comes straight from the heart. For me, at least, it was impossible to not have been reminded of people I knew, places I'd been, or things I'd done when I was younger. As you follow a daily routine through the town, you hear about the struggles of each character, which by the way, is a great way of telling the story of the town while adding more familiarity to the experience. The pain in these characters' lives aren't just growing pains or problems that are sprung out of chaos with no origin. Almost every story in this game is impacted by something in the greater world. Major problems facing the citizens of Possum Springs are often economic, which again, honestly, is a pretty accurate depiction of most people's lives. Night in the Woods could have just had one or two characters that were affected by financial issues, or none at all, but instead opted to use that overarching conflict to connect the themes of many of the characters together. How does the lack of job prospects impact characters still in young adulthood? How does it impact older generations? Many characters suffer from the same sorts of issues, but they manifest in different variations 
And often not every character comes to the same conclusion about why these problems exist and what to do about them. Despite these economic problems being near universal for Possum Springs citizens, it sows regular conflict between them, and it's pretty heartbreaking. Whew, that was long-winded. Wait, please don't go! Here's some Fortnite! I think because Night in the Woods chooses to tell such a different story than most games, and it tells it so well, it feels like a breath of fresh air in gaming. Even though most of the time you're just kind of reading text bubbles. Stories in video games really rarely focus on systemic evils. The evils of the world mainly revolve around the presence of self-centered assholes or even fantastically evil creatures, and sometimes they do bad stuff, I guess, right? Stories can end up being too narrowly focused and miss a whole range of issues worth talking about. It's just like a famous philosopher once said, Did you know there's a button down there where you can subscribe to my channel? Did you know that? Did you know it? So in a nutshell, there are plenty of special moments you can find in the game if you spend the time to look. But the game can also be pretty quickly breezed through in one day of playing. Meaning that this game can be played in a pretty short amount of time or be prolonged if you want to explore every aspect of Possum Springs. In my opinion, you get out of this game what you explore and what you connect with and eventually become invested in. My biggest issue with this game is mainly that the dialogue can drag at times, especially in certain moments. But I definitely think you get the most out of this game if you do try to look into each person's world in Possum Springs. Ironically, despite all of the characters in this game being represented by cartoon animals, it succeeds much more at representing intimate elements of the real world than most games with hyper-realistic art styles. Night in the Woods really captures the atmosphere of each setting it portrays despite the simplicity of the visual style. To me, it always resembled a pop-up storybook, especially in the moments you have wandering around Possum Springs. And all the characters, the settings, and even the arm-waving animations are unbelievably adorable. The colors are just so great and the game feels absurdly cozy. Even the portions of the game where you just walk around town and jump along are so atmospheric and soothing. Since I'm definitely not an artist myself, I'll leave it at that, but I absolutely love the way this game looks. Night in the Woods is full of super catchy tunes I could listen to on a loop for hours. The music in this game is music to my ears. Do you get that joke? Do you get it? I'm not sure why I wrote it. A handful of the songs in the soundtrack legitimately gave me chills when they were played during particularly emotional moments. And the game also has really great sound effects that immerse you in the world and give a real weight to everything. And double ironically, even though my profile picture is a bunny, I'm not actually usually a big fan of animal people as a stylistic choice. But between Night in the Woods and A Short Hike, I am now convinced it obviously has a place. And when it comes to Night in the Woods, honestly, if they weren't all cute animals, the game would be a lot more visually boring. And also kind of more sad, actually. Oh dang, that character's talking about child abuse, but it's such a cute teddy bear, what the heck? So although it doesn't really have a deep purpose in the narrative as far as I know, it suits the style of the game and keeps it from becoming too somber or bland. And also, every time I see a cat cat walk by, I almost have a break from reality. May is a cat, but that cat is a cat. What does it mean? <laughs> One interesting tidbit about the game that I noticed has to do with the dialogue options. Even the gameplay mechanics in which the story is distributed by come across more honest than most games. Let me explain. When interacting with characters, your choices really don't matter in the overall scope of the world. May can choose different responses, but they aren't actually that different from one another. And other than deciding whether or not you want to hang out with Greg or B one day, there basically aren't any major choices in the game. It's really up to you who you interact with, and that's your only choice. And I can't help but feel that it meshes really well with the themes of the story, 
The game doesn't lead you on to believe that there are some kind of grand consequences for your action, like many story games tend to. It has a much more down-to-earth way of telling a story about a group of young adults. Instead of other games that try to convince you you can change so much of what is around you, Night in the Woods does the opposite, which resonates much more painfully and ultimately is a more realistic way of addressing so many of the themes that the game presents. And regardless of the possible thematic choice involved, you're actually experiencing the world of Possum Springs through someone else's eyes. May isn't a blank slate. She's just as much of a character in this story as anyone else. And like I said, the only big choice you have is which of May's homies to hang out with. Which leads me to my absolute favorite part of this game. Iconic Millennial B. B is by far the strongest character in this game because she's a convergence of most of the major themes present in the narrative. Her story touches on themes surrounding economics, mental health, family, and belonging. She is tired, sarcastic, and trapped in unfortunate circumstances that are no fault of her own. Beyond that, Beatrice is one of the best and most tragic portrayals of a struggling young adult in this day and age that I've seen in a video game, possibly ever. Without spoiling too much, B is a character who is forced into a situation of economic powerlessness with a very little emotional support that ultimately leads her to become comparably disconnected from other people and perpetually stressed out. B is an excellent character in her own right, but the way you're forced to interact with her and your very limited ability to help her is agonizingly effective. Your old best friend is trapped in a bad situation that asks way more than is reasonable of anyone her age to deal with and is without any easy options. Sad, isn't it? Sad, isn't it? What are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do? You wanna give her money, right? With what? A bank heist? You wanna fix her family situation? How you gonna do that, bud? By hiring a militant psychologist? Maybe you can pull out your handy dandy time travel skills and go back and- Oh wait! That's right! You don't have those! Because this is based on the real world! where things are freaking sad and hard. Remember when I said this game didn't have to rely on bodies flying through the air to create tension? Obviously, I really recommend B's story specifically, but even Greg's story is super quality and ultimately, you know, I just respect Night in the Woods for depicting such a great story about homies being homies, even in somewhat dysfunctional circumstances. Ride or die, okay? I didn't realize until I started reflecting on the characters more that actually the majority of the main cast of characters are actually not straight. Now, if you had told me 15 years ago as a youngster that this game would exist, I would have said, what? I'm not gay. I'm not gay. What? <laughs> And in general, I also commend the depiction of messing around with your friends in very irresponsible ways. Quite generally, there is not enough representation in video games about young adulthood that depicts mundane delinquency. Honestly, the most important form of representation we should all be talking about. Right about now, you might be wondering, Whatever happened to those gamer girls on that island? Well, you horny slut, let me tell you. Once again, imagine for a moment an island with three gamer girls. One of these gamer girls thinks that the sale of gamer girl bathwater is probably fine the way it is. The second gamer girl believes we should subsidize gamer girl bathwater. And the last gamer girl says that we should ban gamer girl bathwater. You may be asking yourself, where is this going? And also, why are my eyes fixed to the screen? But stay with me, we'll get to Night in the Woods. So three gamer girls, two that want to change gamer girl bathwater sales on their gamer girl island, and one that is fine with the current state of gamer girl bathwater sales. The gamer girl that is just fine with the way things are, 
now holds just as much of a political position as anyone else. Just because an opinion sticks closely to the status quo doesn't mean it doesn't have a point of view or a particular recommendation for how society should be. The point is that all of these gamer girls hold political positions even if one of them isn't tugging in one direction or the other away from the status quo. Having said that, let's be real here. When there's politics in video games, you're not upset because there are politics in video games. You're upset because it's politics you don't like. And on some level, I can relate to this. When I play a game and it has terrible politics, I think the story is definitely made worse. For instance, your silence on thong representation is deafening, Bethesda. On that note, has anyone noticed recently that the people marketing video games made by sizable companies are trying extra hard to convince people there's not a single politic present in their products? Hey, get your politics out of my science fiction. And of course, it's just a marketing tactic. But here lies the potential of indie games specifically. If your game is just like about mining blocks or something, it doesn't exactly need to have some kind of coherent perspective on the world and its narrative. All I'm saying is that in the current climate of games, it's pretty rare to see games grounded in the real world that are actually pretty distinctive in the things they're trying to say while executing narrative beats really, really well. I love Night in the Woods because it isn't that totally sanitized, corporately approved story. It has strong opinions, and when you see the difficulties the characters experience, it makes sense as to why those opinions are present. It gives you a clue into other people's lives in a pretty profound way. And that is something that narratives based on the real world are very uniquely qualified to do. There are tons of video games out there. Night in the Woods is so special because it tells such a unique story with loving earnestness. Just, you know, hashtag be the right gamer girl. And remember what I said about video games sometimes being like a conversation? As the video game industry is currently plagued with a variety of different problems involving crunch, corruption, and abuse, Night in the Woods has some pretty interesting things to say about the way those things impact people from all walks of life. And Greg rules, okay? And now, a special thanks to my favorite gamer girls, my patrons. They made this video possible. If you want to support more videos like this, go ahead and give me your money so I can buy some Gamer Girl bathwater or whatever. It would be very funky fresh of you. My current patrons are Jack Burton, Jesse Vlogs, Recon is Dead Inside, Scott, Shadow Warrior 1000, Great Osiris, Voraman, David, Oswald, Jordan, Damien, Joshua, Stefan, and Jesse. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.